Hi, I'm Greta. Hi, I'm Sophia. Hi, I'm Caroline. Hi, I'm Leon. And we're here to talk to you about bacteria and archaea cells. Bacteria and archaea are both classified as prokaryotic cells, meaning that their nucleus is not contained by a membrane. Originally, they were both included in the same group, but in the 1970s, a microbiologist found that there were definitely two distinct groups of archaea and bacteria. Bacteria and archaea are very similar, but distinct by means of evolution and differences in their chemistry and physiology. This is a picture about bacteria cells. The organelles include cytosol, cytoplasm, cell wall, single chromosome DNA, ribosomes, plasmid, plasma membrane, flagella, nucleoid, capsule, and pili. Cytosol is a fluid that is contained inside the cell. Cytosol holds all the organelles inside the cell. It's often confused with cytoplasm, but the main difference is that cytoplasm is more of like a jelly, and then cytosol is more of a fluid. Now we're going to be talking about cytoplasm. To the left, we have a microscopic picture of it, and to the right, we have more of a 3D model. Cytoplasm is a thick solution that fills each cell and is enclosed by the cell membrane. It is mainly composed of water, salts, and proteins. It's found everywhere but the nucleus. Although cytoplasm may appear to have no form of structure, it actually is highly organized. Cytoplasm is responsible for giving a cell its shape. It helps fill out the cell and keeps organelles in their place. Without cytoplasm, the cell would be deflated and materials would not be able to pass easily from one organelle to another. Now I'm talking about cell wall. The cell wall of bacteria is called peptidoplacan and it surrounds the entire bacteria and provides their protection. The cell wall of archaea is similar to the cell wall of bacteria. It only differs in chemical structure. The cell wall of archaea surrounds the whole cell and provides a protection. Peptidoglycan is made out of chains of alternating molecules, and when these two molecules are covalently bonded together, it's called the glycan chain. And glycan chain contains a carbohydrate backbone, and peptidoglycans may also be used to estimate the activity of lysine enzymes. Now I'm going to be talking about the nucleoid. The nucleoid is not confined by any membrane, but is still visibly recognizable. The DNA is found in this region of the bacteria cell. Now I'm going to be talking about single chromosome DNA. Chromosomal DNA is found in a region called the nucleoid. The chromosome along with several proteins and RNA molecules is what forms the nucleoid. In addition to the chromosomes, bacteria contains plasmids, which are small circular DNA molecules. The circular chromosomal DNA of bacteria must be compacted about 1,000 fold to fit within a bacterial cell. Part of this compaction comes through the formation of loop domains, where segments of DNA are folded into loop-like structures that are held in place by DNA binding proteins. The formation of loop domains compacts the DNA about tenfold. Further compaction is accomplished through a process known as supercoiling. In this process, which is under the control of the enzymes DNA gyrase and topoisomerase 1, twists are introduced in the DNA molecule that cause it to compact by coiling onto itself. This is much like the process of coiling that you can observe by twisting a rubber band. DNA looping and supercoiling make the bacterial chromosome more compact so that it can fit within the nucleoid of the bacterial cell. Ribosomes are responsible for the protection of protein in all living cells. Cells typically contain many thousands of ribosomes. They're an assembly of proteins and ribosomal RNAs. When a cell needs to make proteins, it looks for ribosomes. For a better understanding, imagine they're like construction guys who connect one amino acid at a time and build long chains. What's most special about ribosomes is that they're found in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Flagella is like a long tail at the back part of the archaea and bacterial cell, and it helps with the movement. Capsule is the outer layer of polysaccharides that helps protect the bacteria cell. 
Pili are small hair-like structures on the surface of many bacteria. The pilosome bacteria act as a bridge in bacterial cell reproduction because they allow for the transfer of DNA between the two bacterial cells. One bacterial cell will act as a donor and the other a recipient, and the only way for the two cells to come into contact is through the two pileus. They also allow the bacterial cells to attach to other cells. All cells are contained by a cell membrane that keeps the pieces inside. Whenever you think of a cell membrane, think of a plastic bag with tiny holes in it. This cell membrane holds all of the organelles together. The cell membrane is used during osmosis because water passes through the membrane and makes the side outside of the membrane and inside of the membrane in the cell even. Plasmids are circular DNA molecules found in the cytoplasm of a bacterial cell. One class of plasmids, called or the R factors, are used to help bacteria cells create resistance against certain antibiotics. These are important plasmids, but they're also very harmful to certain uh, to a certain degree to humans, especially when they get bacterial infections and they can't fight them off with antibiotics because of these plasmids. Um, plasmids also play an important role in gene cloning and also um, the production of certain proteins such as human insulin. We have chosen to focus in on the tuberculosis bacteria. So now we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> tuberculosis is caused by tubercle baculus or microbacterium tuberculosis. Um, baculus is often recognized by its rod shape. Um, also, Microbacterium tuberculosis is in the same species as Microbacterium leprii. So, um, the same Microbacterium leprii causes leprosy in humans. So, it's kind of in the same species as Microbacterium tuberculosis. Um, tuberculosis, is, what it does is it sets deep within the lungs and forms nodules or tuberculous um, tubercles inside of the lungs, which cause erosion of the respiratory tissues inside of the lungs, and is often recognized by a deep cough. Oh my gosh, Leon, did you see the new breaking news? Oh my god, I see it. I know! Breaking news! We just got word of a new study that can reduce TB testing to as little as one day. This is pretty awesome considering the last time was about three months. This means that people can be treated with the right drugs and they can be treated faster. This also reduces the amount of bacteria strains that are becoming resistant to antibiotics used to treat it because the antibiotics are being used for a long amount of time because they're not using the right ones, so they're not getting cured. Now, this can significantly reduce the death rates of TB, which are among the highest in the world right now. And there are three main tests being used right now. Two of them use molecular uh, techniques to look for genetic mutations in the pathogen's DNA that can to, um, that confer resistance in antibodies. The third of these tests is more for communities that don't have as much money and resources and can't pay for the test as well. So this um, method employs a more low-cost, standard, easy-to-use version of um bacterial cultural techniques. Cultural. While we're on the topic of bacteria, bacteria and archaea have been found in the Challenger Deep Canyon of the Mariana Trench, which is 11,000 miles below sea level, one of the deepest points in the world. These bacteria and archaea are thought to feed on dust and organic rich sediments that are found in the water because of earthquake, 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 <laughs> earthquake cause landslides. In a recent study, researchers from the Salk Institute found a strain of E. coli in mice that helps them retain muscle mass and fats during bacterial infection. This is important because infections from drug-resistant bacteria are becoming more and more common each year, with more than 2, 000, 2 million infections, with 23,000 being fatal. This discovery will lead to new discoveries in drug-resistant bacteria. On July 29, 2015, at the University of Illinois at Chicago, researchers have engineered a tethered ribosome that works nearly as well as the organelle and produces all the proteins and enzymes within a cell. This new ribosome may lead to the production of new drugs and have a better understanding of how ribosomes work. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.